everyone, me again. If you're new around here, my name's Alice and I make videos all about affordable makeup and fashion. And today, as you can see from the title, I'm going to be walking you through my everyday makeup routine, which is pretty much what I'm wearing right now. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't actually wear makeup every single day. I'm self-employed, so I don't have to. So maybe I should have called this my once or twice a week makeup routine, but there you go. As always, I'm only going to be using affordable products, so there's a lot of things from the drugstore, there's a lot of things from AliExpress. Pretty much all the products I'm talking about today are things that I'll have mentioned on my channel hundreds or thousands of times at this point, so if you're a regular viewer, none of this is going to be a surprise to you. Anyway, that's pretty much everything, so let's jump into the tutorial. I do my makeup in a bit of a weird order, so I usually start with my eyebrows. I just feel like when I'm drawing my eyebrows on on bare skin, it just shows up the product a lot better. So I'll do my eyebrows and then I'll go back to my foundation and then I'll do my eyes and then I'll go back to my base. But this is just kind of what's been working best for me. So for eyebrows, I'm going to use the same two products that I use in every single video. I'm going to start out with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. And I do tint my eyebrows, so I don't need to do a massive amount to them. I used to really have to like fill them in to get them to show up. But at the moment I'm just drawing around the outside just to give them a bit more shape. And then I'm filling in any sparse areas. I haven't been uh, plucking my eyebrows as much lately, so they are looking a little bit more wild. But I kind of like it. And then I either set them in place with a tinted brow gel or a clear mascara. So if I'm using a tinted brow gel, I'll use the Essence Make Me Brow brow gel and I used the lighter shade for this. But at the moment, like I said, I did tint them a couple of days ago, so they're already looking quite dark. So I think I'm just going to use a clear mascara today. The one I've got at the moment is from Collection, but honestly, any clear mascara will do exactly the same thing. I just grabbed the cheapest one that's in Superdrug. I don't know about you guys, but I always have to have a cup of tea whenever I'm doing my makeup. Like, it's got to the point where I've just conditioned my brain to always crave tea whenever I sit down to put my face on. This next product is something that, again, you'll have probably seen a million times before if you watch my channel on a regular basis. So this is the Revolution Gold Elixir Rosehip Seed Oil. I like to use this as a primer. Over this last year or so, I've really been loving oils as a primer. I can't really use regular primers anymore. I don't know if my skin has just got drier because I'm getting older or what's going on, but makeup just doesn't sit right unless I put like either this or the Revolution Baking Oil or any other kind of like oily primer that comes with a dropper. Like I just cannot get my base to look good unless I use something like this. So I'm just going to get a couple of drops in my hand and then rub my hands together and just pat it where I need it. I used to do that thing where you just kind of drop it on your face. You know, like they do on Instagram. And you know, that does work. That does get the job done. But I found that I was using like maybe three times more product than I actually needed to. I like to really make sure I get under the eyes as well, because that's a bit where I've got some fine lines now and fingers can look quite dry under there quite quickly. And then we can jump in with some foundation. So foundations are probably the thing that I like to switch up the most, depending on what time of year it is, depending what my skin's doing, depending if I can be bothered to mix something to make my perfect shade. Most of the time I probably can't. At the moment I would say these foundations here are probably my top three. I really like the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation Stick. I like to mix the shades 80 and 100 together. The only reason and I'm trying not to mention this in my videos at the moment is because it's a little bit harder to find now and I'm not sure if it's being discontinued or what's going on with it. So I don't really want to use that, but I do love the product itself. I really love the Revolution Fast Base Foundation Stick in the shade F1. Like, I've only got this much of it left. I really love using this because it is so, so quick to apply with it being a foundation stick. It's also very pigmented, so I feel like it's quite easy to just keep building up coverage where you need it. Recently, I've also really been using the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Foundation. This is in the shade F1 as well. I've used this in two recent videos, so I'm not going to use it again today, but I have actually been reaching for this sometimes when I do my everyday makeup. 
you know, if I need that little bit more coverage. This one is a bit more long wearing than the Fast Base Foundation Stick, so I'll typically reach for this if I want to wear my makeup for the entire day. But before I do foundation, I've actually completely forgotten a step, so... So first I'm just taking the collection Illuminating Touch Brightening Concealer. Mine is in the shade Naked One, and this one's got like quite a pink tone to it, so it's really, really good for going underneath the eyes. The thing is, it's a little bit dark for me, so I like to put this on before my foundation. And then I just blend it out with a Real Techniques concealer brush. By using a brush instead of my sponge, it just means that I get to keep more of the coverage. So as you can see, it's just really brightened up the whole under eye area. So now I'm actually going to go in with foundation and I'm going to use my Revolution Fast Base Foundation Stick. I think it's been a while since I've used this on my channel, but it is something that I reach for a lot. So to start off with, I just kind of dot it where I feel like I need the coverage. I like to start out using less product and then I kind of build it up where I need to. So I just start out by kind of tapping the product and then I kind of fuse it out. So I'm getting most of that coverage on the areas where I need it, like my areas of redness, on my cheeks, near my jaw, that kind of thing. But then I'm just blending it out onto the areas of my skin that maybe don't have as many problems, just to get like an even coat. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, this sponge is a sponge that again, I use quite a lot on this channel. It's from AOA, it's their charity sponge. I think it's like a dollar fifty, and yes, you do have to pay ten dollars international shipping if you live in the UK, like I do. But it's worth it. So once I've got like my first layer, I just kind of dot it on areas where I'm still showing a bit of redness. So like definitely down here, around my cheeks, and just a bit up here as well. And I'll just use the tip of my sponge, and that way I can just be a bit more precise. I have a little patch of skin redness right here that's quite sensitive, so I do build up foundation and concealer quite a bit over here. And there's also another bit just here on this cheek where I do have to build up the product a bit more as well. But this is what I love about a foundation stick, you can just kind of keep layering it up and going and going and going and just getting the exact area where you have issues. So at this point, where I've still got a bit of redness showing, I've still got imperfections peeking through, but everything looks pretty good, I'll do my eye makeup, and then I'll come back and finish the base afterwards. Because otherwise, when I used to finish my base makeup before I did my eye makeup, I just found that I would keep building up my base and keep adding more and more coverage, and more and more foundation, and it would just look too much. So doing it this way around just stops me from piling on too much foundation and concealer, basically, which I'm definitely guilty of. But before I do that, I do just like to get a cleansing wipe and just get rid of any foundation on my lips and then add a little bit of whatever clear lip balm I've got on hand at the time. So onto the eyes. I'm going to start by using the Revolution Pro Eye Elements in Core. This is just a nice kind of canvas to put your makeup on top of. So I'll either use this or sometimes I'll use the Conceal and Define concealer from Revolution as well. That's a really nice eye base. So I'm just taking my Real Techniques concealer brush again for this. And then for my everyday makeup, recently I've been reaching a lot for my custom eyeshadow palette. So if you've been around here for a few months, you'll know that I've actually been working on this for a little while. I've been collecting individual shades from Colourpop, from Revolution, a few other places, and I've just been trying to create my kind of perfect go-to palette that has every single shade that I want. So I'm going to do a whole video about this, talking through all the shades in this palette. Today I'm just going to chat you through the ones that I'm actually using. Oh, by the way, I should mention, I obviously don't use like all the shades in here on an everyday basis. This is just so I've got a nice little selection to choose from. I think the ones that I reach for the most are actually from Revolution Pro. So they do a pack of five eyeshadow refills. I think it's called Base. And most of the ones I reach for on an everyday basis are from that pack of shadows. So I start out with this one. This is from the Base pack and it's called Sufficient. It's like a little bit lighter than my skin tone and it's completely matte. So this is really nice to set my eye primer or concealer. I just kind of go over it with my concealer brush again before I set everything because it's usually creased straight away. That's just what happens to me because of my hooded lids. And then I kind of stamp on the setting colour with the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. 
And when I set the lid as well, it just gives me a little bit more coverage, which I like. Also for me, it just helps me to blend my eyeshadows a little bit easier. At the moment, my favourite matte shade to use on an everyday basis is this one right here. This is from the Revolution Pro base pack as well. It's called Exceptional. It's a really nice kind of nothing colour. So I just like to get a bit of that colour on a Real Techniques base shadow brush. Mine is looking very battered because I absolutely love this eyeshadow brush. I use it all the time. And I'm just going to start off with by stamping some of that colour just on the outer corner and then once I've stamped it out I just start to gently buff it in and fuse out the edges. And I'll focus that on the crease but I'll do a little bit in the outer corner of the lid as well. Ooh, I've just moved my contact lens around, hang on. Mm. So if I don't have time to do a proper like eyeshadow look, I'll kind of leave it here. I just feel like this is a really nice way to define the eyes, to emphasise the crease a bit, add a little bit of colour but not too much. But most of the time I do like to add a nice little bit of shimmer on the lid. You can see that there's a lot of like shimmery neutral shades in here that are perfect to just wash over the lid. I think today I'm going to use the shade Snake Eyes by Colourpop, which is this one right here. So whatever shimmer shade I'm using, I just kind of take it on my finger and then I'll sort of place it all over the lid. Oh wow, this shade is so beautiful. And then I'll get my crease shadow brush out again and just kind of buff the edges. But I'm not too neat about it, I'm not too precise about it, I just kind of throw it on. So I really love eyeliner but I never, never wear it on an everyday basis. Firstly, it takes too much time but also my eyes are quite hooded so I find it really difficult to put on eyeliner anyway. So I wouldn't want to put myself through that ordeal every morning. But something I've been doing recently is just taking one of the darker shades in my custom palette and just taking like a basic angled brush and just doing a really rough line that way. I really like how that looks. It's a lot more forgiving than traditional like gel eyeliner or something more precise as well. You can kind of be a bit messier with it which I obviously really like because I suck at eyeliner. So I'm going back to the Revolution Pro base pack again and I'm using the shade Kosher. And then I don't really line the entire lid. I just focus towards the like outer two thirds and then I'll just smudge things a little bit. And there we go, I've got a bit of definition and it took almost no time at all. And that's pretty much the eyeshadow done. I might go back in at some point and add either my highlighter or my lighter shade in my palette and just do the inner corners under the brow bone, but I don't always feel the need to do that on an everyday basis. I'll see how I feel at the end of the look and maybe I'll come back to it, maybe I won't. So I'm going to do my mascara now. I think for most people this is quite a simple part of their makeup routine, but I like to spend that little bit of extra time on it just because even though I've been using Rapid Lash for the last two months or so, my eyelashes are still like nothing to write home about. So I'm going to curl them twice and then I'm going to use two different kinds of mascara because I am just that level of extra. I'm just going to use some traditional eyelash curlers. I think these ones are from Boots. And then I'm also using heated eyelash curlers as well. These are from AliExpress. And then my favourite mascaras are ones that you'll have seen on this channel so many times. Both of them are amazing individually but I really like to layer them if I've got the time. So first I like to take the Poudier, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Mascara Rocket. This is from AliExpress, it's about £1.20 and it is one of the best mascaras I've ever tried in my life. It's incredible. It's got these little fibres in it which just add so much length to your lashes. But then I like to go over it with the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara just to give it that little bit of extra volume. Also the Maybelline Mascara is a little bit more long wearing as well. So once my eyes are finished I like to just look at my face as a whole and just see if I need to top up my foundation a bit or if I can just get away with adding more concealer. I do just want to take a little bit and just add it here because I can see like this bit of sensitivity just peeking through so I'm going to top it up there and I'm also going to just add a little bit to the centre of my face as well. So of course I have layered up that foundation quite a bit so I don't typically need to put on like a huge amount of concealer but I definitely do use some in the areas where I need it. So I typically use two slightly different formulas so I'll have a creamier one that I'll put like under the eyes, over any areas of redness, that kind of thing. And then I'll have a slightly more matte, more high coverage one that I'll put over blemishes. That being said though, I have used the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in 05 in the past 
and for me that one kind of can do both I just don't have one in my stash at the moment so the one I'm putting under my eyes first of all is the Primark My Perfect Colour Concealer this I think is in porcelain yes it's in porcelain this is a really nice creamy concealer it's not the most high coverage in the world I'm just going to dab this where I need to and for me that is just a little bit under the eyes I don't do like the huge triangle thing you know I'm 29, I can't get away with that. I have to be quite sparing with concealer under my eyes now or it just makes everything look worse. I'm also putting a little bit just on my forehead just to brighten the center of my face. My nose, I'll use the matte concealer for that but I'll put a little bit like just on the outside here, just a little bit under the mouth and just on the little sensitive bit of redness just here. See, so yeah, I don't use a huge amount of concealer. Like I said, I don't really need to because I do tend to layer up my foundation quite a bit. I'll just use the same Real Techniques concealer brush. Sometimes I'll use my sponge, the same sponge that I use to apply my foundation. It just depends what my skin is doing, really. And then for my blemishes and on my nose, I'm using the Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. My shade is C0.7. I do really like this concealer. I think in terms of coverage, the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer is better. And if I have really nasty breakouts, I will go out and repurchase that. But the Conceal and Define has a significantly better shade range. So I just take a bit of this on the back of my hand. I'm using a brush from AOA. This is their E117 brush. This is actually supposed to be for gel eyeliner. Something like this or like a nail art brush. Something really really skinny works so so well for blemishes because you can just get right over it and it stops you using too much product. So that's what I like to use. So I'm going to put a bit on my nose as well but then this is also going to go on any breakouts. If I've still got any breakouts showing, sometimes I'll just set it with powder and then go over with concealer and just keep layering powder and concealer and powder and concealer until it's covered. Today, I think I can get away with this. I think this looks fine, but we'll see how I feel when I've set everything down. So I use at least two different setting powders because again, I'm quite extra. And I'll normally start off with something like this. So this is the Revolution Pro Luminescence Powder. And this is a really beautiful baked powder. Technically it's a highlighter. I use it as a setting powder. It's not like a shimmery formula or anything like that. It just gives a really beautiful glow. So that's kind of the powder I'll use to set everything if it's just like a normal everyday makeup look. But on days where I do want my makeup to last a little bit longer, I go for this. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder in the shade 001. This is a little bit more mattifying. So I don't use this all the time because it can look a little bit drying on me. But if I really want to get like that extra bit of wear out of my makeup, I will need something a little bit more intense. So that's when I'll reach for something like this. And then the second powder I use is from Revolution Pro as well. This is basically my secret weapon. This is their powder foundation in F2. So like I keep mentioning, I do have blotchy skin. I have areas that are quite sensitive. I have redness. I do have some breakouts as well. So if there's anywhere that has still got a little bit of redness peeking through, I can just dab a little bit on my setting brush. Don't go overboard with this because it will look cakey. And I'll just kind of dab it in the offending areas. I usually put a little bit just on and around my nose as well and just under my mouth because that's where I can get a bit of redness in a few spots. But yeah, I'll just keep it in really, really small areas and it just adds that little bit of extra coverage which is exactly what I need. Now when I put the powder foundation on, sometimes things do look a little bit on the cakey side, but once I've kind of hosed myself down in setting spray, it all comes together. Like, it all works. Just trust me. So I usually like to sculpt my face, and I will either use contour or bronzer. So I use like a bronzer in the summer, but at this time of year I will just stick to a contour. So I have two options when I'm using powder contour. These are both my go-to products. So the first is this palette from Revolution. This is their powder contour palette in the shade Fair. You can see I've got quite a bit of use out of this. This is reduced on the Revolution Beauty website at the moment, so if you fancy a bargain, go and pick this up. It's £4 instead of £8, 
but I don't know if it being on sale means it's being discontinued and I feel like I've used that many Revolution products in this video that I should use my other contour product which is from Focal Your. Again, I've mentioned this a few times on my channel. This is their Sculpt Glow in 01. Today I'm going to use an angled brush by B, which you can get at Superdrug, and just dip into that contour shade. Not too much because I'm pale, so it can look over the top very quickly. I have to work in layers. And I'm just going to create some cheekbones. I start by kind of patting the product on because I've got so much foundation and layers of powder and stuff. If I kind of go straight in with the buffing motions, I'm basically just going to disturb all the makeup that I've put down. So I'll just pat it in first. So for my face shape, I find it's quite flattering to add a little bit of sculpting here and then to also kind of go in a bit down here as well and just get it to meet the jaw. And I'll usually go on my jawline as well and bring it down the neck. And I also like to go on like the top of my forehead as well. I'm just going to match the other side now. I do layer up the contour quite a bit as well. I don't go in with like a load of product at once but I'll kind of build it up. Again that's just because I build up the foundation so much that sometimes you do need to build up your contour and if you wear like blush, bronzer, highlight etc you'll need to build that up a little bit more than you normally would as well. And then for my everyday blush I'll usually reach for a formula that's baked or something that's a bit more radiant, a bit more glowy. So this is one of my options. This is another massive palette from Revolution. Again, this is on sale on their website. But on an everyday basis, I'll probably reach for maybe that rose gold colour there. Sometimes I'll mix it with the slightly pinkier one up here. But again, I don't know if that's being discontinued or what's happening to it. I also really like the Max Factor Creme Puff blushes. I've used them a lot on this channel. Today, I'm going to use this palette from Obsession and I'm going to use the shade right here called Fluke. I really like the formula of that colour in particular. I also really like the colour Flirt next to it which is a little bit more matte. I love these Obsession palettes as well because they're magnetic so you can actually pull out that shade and I could theoretically put it into one of my magnetic eyeshadow palettes if I was going travelling or something. So I really want to get a few more of these Obsession palettes especially their eyeshadows and their blushes and bronzers so I'm definitely going to have a little look at them in boots next time I'm there. But for today I'm just going to take the shade Fluke and I'm using a Real Techniques contour brush. I like to use a contour brush because you can get a really precise application with this. And I think this one is quite pigmented. I might have put a bit too much on the brush, so I'm just going to dab a bit on my arm first, just to make sure I don't kind of, you know, go overboard. I'm just going to go right on the apple of my cheek and then fuse it into the contour. And again, I start out by kind of dabbing the product. I don't really go in and do like a lot of buffing motions. And I don't want to add too much blush. I don't want to look really over the top, but I do like to add a little pop of color. So I don't always bother to put highlighter on. I just find that because I have dry skin, especially at this time of year, it can sometimes emphasize the texture on my skin. So sometimes I'll skip it completely. Today I'm just going to add a little bit just to finish off the look. And I'm going to use this one from Technic. This is their Get Gorgeous Powder Highlighter. This is a really nice subtle one. So I just think it will finish the look quite nicely. So I'm taking this brush from e.l.f. This is their fluffy eye blender brush, but this is one of my favorite brushes for highlighter because you can be quite precise with it but it's so fluffy that you can still blend everything out really really nicely. And I'm just going on my cheekbones and above the brow I'll also go a bit down my nose Cupid's bow and then I'll use a much smaller brush like the accent brush from Real Techniques and I'll just use this in the inner corners and under the brow. So that's the highlighter. If I'm honest, I can take it or leave it. I feel like there's enough glow to my skin that I don't really need highlighter, but there you go. That's what it looks like with the highlighter. Also, I forgot to mention this, but I don't really put like eyeshadow on the bit underneath my eyes. I just find that because my eyes are quite round, this just looks a bit more flattering. The only time I normally put makeup on my lower lash line is if I'm 
putting false eyelashes on because then I can kind of still get the elongated look but usually I will just leave it like this also it's much quicker as well anyway I'm just going to use some setting spray this is from Revolution it's their pro fix fixing spray that I've used 10,000 times on my channel already and yeah I use quite a lot of setting spray if you use a lot of foundation you need to use a lot of setting spray while my fixing spray is just setting on my face I'm going to put some lipstick on I won't normally like do something with lip liner and lipstick and then lip gloss I will just pick one product throw it on and then I'll go so it's normally something quite creamy that I can throw on pretty quickly. I have a few lip products in this kind of similar colour but I'll just show you the ones that have been like in my handbag recently. This is the first one, this is from Revolution, it's their I Heart Revolution Lip Gloss in Chocolate Brownie, really nice kind of movie pinky colour. There's also the Maybelline lipstick in Velvet Beige, I've got a blog post about this and I've used it on my channel a lot. There's also this one in from You Can Be on AliExpress which which is called Salon Latte. This one is a little bit more brown. I'm going to use the Maybelline one today just because I wear it so often that it would be rude not to use it in an everyday makeup video. This colour is a little bit warmer so it actually mixes really well with my natural lip colour which is a lot more pink and it just makes this really nice neutral everyday in between colour. So that's pretty much it. That is my finished everyday makeup routine. Obviously there are days where I will skip certain steps, there are days where I will skip wearing makeup altogether, but this is like the general idea of my go-to look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe you even learned something, which is unlikely because this is one of the most simple makeup looks on YouTube. But I'm a big lover of simple wearable makeup. I really hope you guys are as well. If you are, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed if you're new because that's kind of what I focus on on this channel. I post new videos every Sunday at 9am and sometimes on a Wednesday as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.